Hi everybody, I'm Matthew Hine, Chief Product Officer at RDX Works. Today, I want to talk about identity. The fundamental power of Web3 and DeFi is native digital assets. It's about letting each of us directly hold all of our own assets ourselves and letting us use them freely with any application we want. Native digital assets can let us invest and collect and transact with each other as freely as we can communicate. But developers in the Web3 space are quickly finding out that the other half of building this vision is native digital identity. Without ways of representing identity that are tightly integrated with dApps and smart contracts, Web3 and DeFi are going to stay stuck inside today's tiny crypto bubble. For example, finance has always gone hand in hand with identity. That's why institutional investors worth over $60 trillion are locked outside the crypto bubble today. As much as they want to come in and play, they cannot bring their capital and know-how to DeFi because they have hard legal requirements to only interact with systems that can automatically enforce certain restrictions based on identity. So without institutional grade identity on the L1, that $60 trillion can't flow into DeFi. There are lots of examples like that of why Web3 and DeFi need identity. That's why the winning blockchain platform will be the one that finally does it right for both digital assets and digital identity. And that means a platform that deeply integrates identity while also providing the right developer experience, user experience, and scale. That platform is Radix, and I'm gonna tell you why. So, what is identity? It's, it's tempting to think of it as just a single, simple thing. It's just you. But real identity actually takes many different forms and for really good reason. For example, to log into a website, you typically use a name and a password. That lets you keep some anonymity while still having a unique identity on different websites. To access your bank accounts, the bank often checks things like the phone you're using or secrets that only you know. Those kinds of things prove to the bank that it's really you and not an imposter. Sometimes businesses need to say only certain people can enter here. And so we carry around things like ID and member cards that we can present on demand to show that we're authorized. Going even further, Sometimes businesses need to know that you have certain real world credentials. Basically, they need to know that some trusted entity is willing to vouch for something specific about you. For example, social media applications frequently use an SMS verification on your phone to prove that you're a unique person. Or financial businesses will often trust a passport issued by a government to know things like your name and where you live. The reasons why we need these different kinds of identity don't go away with Web3 and DeFi. The difference is just that we need to translate them from the traditional world into new forms that can interact directly with a world of decentralized applications and digital assets. What does that mean? Well, in a Web3 world, we still need to log in but now we're logging into dApp websites that can interact with wallets holding our digital assets. We still need to prove that we're the same person, but now it's so that we can control our own accounts on a blockchain. We still need to prove our authorization, but now it's being checked by dApps and smart contracts. And we still sometimes need to prove real world credentials, but we need to have those credentials in a form that also can be checked by dApps and smart contracts when they need things like proof of human checks or AML KYC. Unfortunately, today, the standard blockchain way of creating these different kinds of identity is really limited. Basically, today's blockchain platforms don't provide specific tools for identity. And so there's basically just one model they use for just about everything. And that model is, you are your account. Your account is controlled by a single seed phrase or private key, and you can use that private key to prove that you own the account. That's it. 
So you know that world coin sphere that we're all supposed to look into to get a blockchain identity? In the end, that's just a company doing a retina scan to control access to a single private key. In the end, you are your account is a really limiting form of identity that creates a lot of problems. A big one is that you're stuck tying together who you are with what you own. It's like if you had to use your bank card to log into websites and board flights. In that kind of model, it's really hard to use different identities in different places. It also means that you can't freely mix and match which assets you want to share with what application. It's also a really risky way of doing things. Your entire identity for any purpose is forever locked to this single account and the single seed phrase that controls it. If you lose that seed phrase, there goes your entire identity. And last, when we're looking ahead to more mature applications that need real world credentials, it's really unclear how we can even do that in this you are your account model. So clearly, we need a better solution. We need ways of creating specific forms of identity for specific purposes. It has to work natively with digital assets and smart contracts, and it has to be secure, reliable, and simple enough to be used by everyone from mainstream users all the way to regulated institutions. And the only way to do that is to build identity solutions into the design of the blockchain platform itself. And that is what Radix has done. The Radix network has four purpose-built solutions for identity, and they're all deeply integrated with the Radix engine and Scripto for great developer experience and with the Radix wallet for great user experience. Here's the overview. First, personas. Personas are Radix's system to provide a secure, password-free login to dApps. Any website can use personas as its login mechanism from finance applications to social media. You can create as many personas as you like, and you can use them wherever you like. They're secure and have nice, familiar multi-factor recovery with no password to remember or write down. All of those features are enabled behind the scenes by special features of the Radix network. That means that personas don't have to resort to centralized cloud storage of a private key like some other systems. The Radix wallet lets you use personas right alongside your accounts and assets. Basically, when you log into a DAP website with your persona, you can freely choose who you want to be, and you can also choose what you want to bring with you whenever you connect to that particular DAP. You can even change who you want to be and what you want to share in the future. Next up is access controllers. Access controllers are Radix's platform native multi-factor technology for controlling and recovering access to your accounts and your personas. They make it possible to control Radix accounts and assets with the same sort of user experience that you're used to from a bank. That's why on Radix, we call them smart accounts. With smart accounts, signing transactions can be as simple as a biometrics check on your phone or it can be configured to require multiple factors for extra peace of mind. But if you lose your phone, it's not a problem because the access controller lets you change the locks on your accounts to migrate control to your new phone. And nowhere in all of this are you forced to write down and protect a seed phrase that controls everything. Unlike many multi-factor systems being applied to blockchain accounts on other networks, there's no centralized party behind access controllers. They're platform native components on the Radix network. And the Radix wallet will start making use of those multi-factor features this year. Third, we've got badges. Badges on Radix are essentially a convenient tokenized form of things like ID and member cards. The Radix network includes a built-in auth system that's designed around the idea of presenting badges to prove that you, the holder of the badge, are authorized to do whatever you're trying to do. Basically, this means that a smart contract can pass out badges to certain users and define what things those badges grant access to. For users, the experience is super simple. 
If a dApp needs you to present a badge for a certain transaction, in your Radix wallet, you'll see it right there on your transaction review screen in a section labeled presenting. It's pretty much the digital equivalent of flashing your ID card at the door and being waved inside by a security guard. If you're a developer, badges mean that you can quickly and intuitively define secure and flexible authorization for your smart contracts. You can set auth requirements that range from simple user ID badges all the way to corporate style multi-level auth structures, all without any custom auth logic code. Okay, last we come to a form of identity for real world credentials. And for those of you who are already following Radix, this is all new stuff. As DeFi expands, there's no question that real world credentials are going to become more and more necessary. A dApp might need a simple proof of human check, it might need to check AML KYC status, or it might need to check for something like qualified investor credentials. In all of these cases, a dApp needs to know that an authority that it trusts is willing to make a claim that this user has this particular credential. Trying to create a system like this on an open blockchain network creates a really nasty dilemma. On one hand, if you create a system that makes real world credential data directly available on the blockchain network for smart contracts, that data is all there for the public. Anybody can look at it. Even if you encrypt that data, it's just a matter of time before the encryption is broken and your data becomes public. It's a privacy nightmare. On the other hand, if you create a system that runs fully off the blockchain network, you can solve the privacy problem, but smart contracts can't see the credentials and so they can't directly use them for access. It doesn't really solve the problem in a way that works for Web3. So how do we solve the dilemma? Radix badges and the Radix wallet can create the perfect hybrid system. It provides on-network use of credentials with smart contracts while keeping your personal data off network and under your own control. Here's how it works. On the Radix network, whoever is providing the credential creates a special badge just for you called a DID badge. DID here stands for decentralized ID. It's like the Web3 version of an official ID card that you carry around in your pocket. You can easily present that DID badge to a smart contract just like any other badge. That's great, but then how can the smart contract check for real world data? Like for example, your date of birth for an over 18 check. Using Radix's built-in asset tools, the issuer of the DID badge can easily print stuff right on the digital ID card. Like I checked this person's date of birth. The DID badge doesn't actually include the date of birth itself. That would violate your privacy. The badge just says a specific issuer has done that particular check on you. Then the other half of the system happens off network. For every DID badge you own, the Radix wallet can store the actual privacy critical data that sits behind that badge, like your date of birth. More specifically, it stores something called a verifiable credential, or VC. A VC is a special kind of file that absolutely proves that a specific issuer is willing to make a particular claim about you. That means a dApp can request a specific VC from the Radix wallet directly, totally off network, and you're in control of which VCs that you share with who. Once the dApp gets the VC, it can see that its requirements are met, and it basically can tell its own smart contract, hey, if you ever see this did badge in the future, that user is good to go. The result is that the smart contract can do things like check if you're over 18, and it can do it atomically within a transaction without actually having your date of birth on the network. That's exactly the kind of identity system that regulated financial entities and institutional investors need dApps to be built around. That's what will unlock their ability to bring their capital and their applications to DeFi, and they'll do it on Radix. The network capability for the DID and VC system is all there on Radix today. All that's needed now is a little extra wallet support and to settle on some standards of usage to maximize interoperability. That's going to happen over the coming months, working with the Radix developer community and with established providers of credentials for users and companies. 
In the RadFi keynote at the end of 2022, I talked about how Radix is the only L1 network with a full stack technology approach. That approach lets Radix be the platform that can finally get Web3 and DeFi past the huge barriers of terrible developer experience and terrible user experience that are holding it back today. Identity is the next barrier for DeFi that Radix is breaking through. As DeFi becomes bigger and more relied on and more interesting to mass market users and institutional capital, robust forms of on-ledger identity will become more and more required. Those identity features are baked into Radix's full technology stack. And that's what makes Radix ready to be the home for a new generation of dApps, users, and assets. It's that next wave on Radix which can finally take Web3 and DeFi to the next level of real-world impact outside the crypto bubble. Whether you're a crypto trader, a developer, or an entrepreneur with a great idea, we invite you to come download the Radix wallet, check out some dApps, and experience how much better Web3 can already be on Radix.